In this tutorial, I will be showing you the power of Heron Spectre. It's an essential tool if you want to become any good at patching. For this demonstration, I'll be using an IOBox value advanced and a renderer. Since the tutorial is about Heron Spectre and not about the renderer, I'm just gonna hide the render window. Select Alt 3. You can create an inspector by going to the menu and then select new inspector. There is also a shortcut, Control i And since you will be making a lot of inspectors, I advise you to use the shortcut. So let's create the inspector. Just like a patch and a renderer, you can scale and move it. Let's make a nice big inspector for this tutorial. When I hover above my inlets or outlets, you see a name of the inlet and the type of the inlet. But you can only see that for every pin you hover above. With Hair Inspector you can see everything at one go. If I click on this node, Hair Inspector will give me a quick overview of all the functions and options that the renderer has to offer. The inspector will always show the content of the current selected node. Right now I have a renderer selected, so the inspector shows me that. If I select the IO box value, the inspector shows me all the information about the IO box value. Let's click on renderer again. At the first glimpse, the inspector consists of three parts. That's the top part over here. These are the configuration pins. Configuration pins are hidden by default. They're intended to set only once and are not supposed to change during a patch, but you have the option to do it anyway. The middle part will show you all the inlets. The bottom part, or the darker grey area, will show you all the outlets. Hair Inspector also gives the name of the current node that is selected. Now it says Renderer, and if I click on IO Box Value, it says IO Box Value Advanced. So I click on Renderer again, and it says Renderer. I can attach an inspector to a node. If I do that, only the information of the node that it is attached to will be visible in the inspector, even if I select another node. So I press attach to selection and now it's attached. If I go to the IO box value, the inspector isn't changing because it's attached to the renderer. Let's unattach. The inspector will also give you a little helper about your current selected node. It will remind you what you can use it for. These grey boxes before every pin are associated with the visibility of the pin. White means it's hidden and not connectable. Dark grey means it shows and it is connectable. Light grey means it's hidden but still connectable. And what I mean with that you can see here. On the top right of the renderer there is no inlet. But when I hover above it, it says Aspect Ratio. And as you can see in the inspector, Aspect Ratio is set to light grey. You can cycle between these three states by just clicking on the box. As you see, my cursor changed into a hand. So if I click once, it is dark grey. And you see, there is a pin now. If I click again, it is white. You can see the pin is gone and the last pin is now Projection Transform. And that's also the last pin in Head Inspector. So I click again, it's light grey. And that means connectable but hidden. This grey triangle means there's a drop down list underneath just like with the enumerations. So if I right click I can set my full screen dimensions and click again to close. These types of grey boxes are booleans so I can either enable or disable them. Dark grey means enabled or on and light grey means disabled or off. You can also give your node a name. That can be useful for overview or are working with sub patches. A name can be set in the descriptive name field. That's over here. When I double left click, I can enter a name. Number 1. Click outside the box to confirm. And now my renderer is named renderer number 1. If I give an IO box a descriptive name, IO box, you see it's now underneath the node. And that's the difference between an IO box and a node when it comes to descriptive names. 
Descriptive names are also very important when it comes to sub-patches and modules. Sometimes your patch can become very large and her inspector might not be visible anymore. Just select the inspector and press Ctrl T. Now the inspector will always stay on top. You see, I select the patch and the inspector stays on top. You can also use the inspector to enter data, which might be faster than go through every individual inlet. So I select my AO box and I type a value at the I input value, let's say 12. The AO box is now set to 12. And as you can see, the output value has also changed. So an inspector is a brilliant way to show and inspect what is going on in the patch. You can also manipulate several nodes in one go. So if I got a bunch of I.O. box advanced and I select them all, I can now change all three of them. And as a little helper I select uh, more than one node. It says here multi nodal selection. So if I change the I input, all the three nodes are the same now. When I select two or more different types of nodes, like so, I can only change the name because the renderer and the IO box value advanced have not got many things in common to change in one go. When we are going to talk about spreads I will show you what these triangles are for.